Hello, and welcome to Girls STEM Academy. In this multi-part series, we are going to learn how to code in Java. Check out our last video on primitive variables. In this video, we are learning about recursion and its benefits and dangers, then going through some examples. So what is recursion? Recursion is where a method calls itself. For example, here's this add method calling itself. Recursion is also used in math, as you can see in this example with f of x calling itself. Recursion is most helpful when our problem requires us to do the same step multiple times. Notice this sounds like using a loop. In fact, recursive methods can often be written iteratively, but sometimes it is easier or more intuitive to write the program recursively. As you watch this video, please click the subscribe button and click notifications on. It really makes a big difference for us to create good video content. Let's go through an example to really understand what recursion is. Recall that n minus 1 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 all the way until n times 2 times n times 1. n factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 all the way to n minus 2 times n minus 1 times n, which we can alternatively write as n minus 1 factorial times n. We can use this information in our method by returning n times the factorial of n minus 1. But now we have an issue. There is no way to break out of the method. This is an infinite loop. We will constantly be calling factorial of n minus 1 and never end. We want to avoid this, so to do this, we have to add a base case. Once we add a base case, we stop calling the method recursively and break out of the recursion. This is done using an if statement. In this example, we can write if n is less than or equal to 1, then return 1, and then add our previously written code under an else statement. So if we try an example, say send in 3 as a parameter for n, then we know that 3 is not less than or equal to 1. So we return 3 times factorial of 2. Then we have to execute this statement. So we go back in with 2 as a parameter. 2 is not less than or equal to 1. So then we return 2 times factorial of 2 minus 1, which is 1. Now we return to the recursion and put a 1 as the parameter for n. And now n is less than or equal to 1, so this returns 1. And we have 3 times 2 times 1, which equals 6, which is indeed 3 factorial. And now if we run our program, we will see that this works. The most popular example of recursion in math and computer science is the Fibonacci sequence. Remember that the Fibonacci sequence starts 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, and so on, each element being a sum of the previous two elements. As I mentioned before, all recursive methods can be written iteratively, so let's go through that solution first. So we can set a variable to be two elements behind and set that equal to zero. Then we can set an, a variable to be one element behind and set that equal to zero. And then we can create a new variable which represents our current number, or the one that we're trying to find, and set that equal to 1 for now. So now we write our for loop, 
And we're going to start at 1 so that we can get the nth Fibonacci number or else we will end up with attributing like the number 2 as the first element rather than the number 1 being the first element. So we're going to start at i equals 1, then go until n, and increase i by 1 each time. Then we're going to set our current number equal to our previous two numbers. But notice we have to update these numbers, so I'm actually going to do this above the statement. We update our number that is two behind to be the number that is only one behind. Then we update our number that is one behind to be our current number. And again, this ensures that we are starting our Fibonacci sequence at the correct n and not starting one ahead. And then after our loop, we return our current number. All right, so we, if we test it out, as you can see, it prints out our ninth Fibonacci number, or 34. Now, pause the video and try to write the recursive solution for yourself. All right, let's go through the recursive solution. So, as we said before, we can express Fibonacci as the sum of the previous two elements, or f of n equals f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. But remember, we have to add our base case in, stating that if n is less than or equal to 1, we return n. And this is very similar to what we did in the factorial example, except in this case we are returning n, because if we have 0, then we want to return 0, not 1. So now let's test if this works. And this should also print out 34. And as you can see, they work identically. But the Fibonacci solution is a little bit more intuitive and clearly a lot shorter. So what are the dangers of using recursion? While recursion is so intuitive and a very useful tool, we have to be aware of some of the dangers when using recursion. For starters, we could fail to include a base case and end up with an infinite loop. In addition, large numbers, such as trying to find the 10,000th Fibonacci number, our program would be extremely slow and take up a lot of memory. So there you have it. Those were a couple of examples of recursion to show you an intro to recursion, what it is, how to use it, and what to watch for. We hope you enjoyed watching this video and learning about recursion. If you want to see any other video from us on any topic or specific Java concept that interests you, please mention it in the comments below. Check out our other videos on the Metaverse and SQL. Please click the subscribe button to support us so we can add more content every week. Thank you for watching.